In order to determine the x and y components of the acceleration, we have to remember that the acceleration vector is equal to the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time. So we have rewritten the velocity vector here, and again, in order to find the acceleration, we will compute the derivative with respect to time. So the acceleration vector equals, now for the i hat component, the derivative will be 5.1 minus 8t, and then for the j hat or y component, notice the derivative is zero because we have just a constant value here. So in fact, there is zero acceleration in the y direction, and we only have acceleration in the x direction. So for part a, what we'll do is plug in the time of 2.6 seconds. So we can say the acceleration at a time of 2.6 seconds is equal to the following 5.1 minus 8 times the 2.6. And then again, the acceleration over here in the y direction is zero. So let's pick up our calculators and do 5.1 minus eight times 2.6. And we will get an acceleration of negative 15.7. This will come out in meters per second squared. And that would be the component of acceleration in the x direction because that's our i hat component. And then in the y direction, one more time, it's zero meters per second squared. So those would be the answers for part A and B of this question. We come back up and in part C, we are asked when, if ever, is the acceleration equal to zero? So let's rewrite our acceleration vector. We can actually start omitting the y component because it is zero. And since they want the acceleration equal to zero, we would take the x component acceleration and simply set that equal to zero. Subtract the 5.1 to the other side, and then divide both sides by negative eight. And when you do that, you will get a time value of approximately 0.64 seconds. So this would be the time at which the acceleration would momentarily equal zero. Now on to part D. It says, at what positive time does the speed equal 10 meters per second? Well, let's go ahead and rewrite the velocity vector one more time. And then in order to help us understand how to derive speed, we can perhaps proceed in the following manner. We might imagine that we have a component of the velocity along the x direction, and that would be given by this expression right here. So this would be 5.1t minus 4.0t squared. And then we have a component of velocity in the y direction. It's a constant 8.3. Now the speed is simply the magnitude of the velocity at any particular time. So what we would be actually finding would be this vector right here. That would represent the speed. And we can see from Pythagorean theorem that the speed squared would equal the 5.1t minus 4t squared squared plus the 8.3 squared. So this is basically c squared equals a squared plus b squared, Pythagorean theorem. The question noted that the speed is 10 meters per second, so we can actually fill in 10 on the left-hand side here. And our job will be to solve for time. And there could be multiple ways of solving for it, but one way that might make sense is to first square the left-hand side, so this would become 100. And then it will be useful to also square this 8.3. And so that's going to be 68.89. Then let's subtract 68.89 from both sides of the equation. So we'll end up with 31.11 is equal to 5.1t minus 4t squared squared. We could square this out, but it probably is easier just to take the square root of both sides. So if you take the square root of the 31.11, you will get about 5.58. Note that you'll get plus or minus 5.58, because whenever you take the square root of a number, you get two roots. You get the positive and the negative root. And then notice here that the square root and the squaring would cancel, leaving you with just 5.1t minus 4t squared. Let's add the 4t squared to the other side and also subtract the 5.1t. And this way, we'll end up with 0 on the right-hand side. 
the left hand side will be 4t squared minus 5.1t plus or minus 5.58 and then we'll set up the quadratic formula in order to solve for t so remember our a would be 4 our b is negative 5.1 and then our c will be plus or minus 5.58 also don't forget the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a so we'll go ahead and plug in our values here for a b and c notice we're gonna have negative and then negative 5.1 so that will be just positive 5.1 and then under here we're gonna have the negative 5.1 squared minus 4 times our a times our c which is plus or minus 5.58 all divided by 2 times 4. Now at this point you want to pick up your calculator and you can begin perhaps by trying the positive 5.58 for the computation under the square root. But in fact when you do that you end up with a negative number underneath this square root. So that whole thing would turn out to be negative if you use the positive 5.58. So don't use the positive 5.58. Let's just use the negative 5.58. And so in that case, underneath the square root, you'll have 115.29. And then this will be all over 8. Now, we must remember that we want the positive time for which the speed was 10 meters per second. So we actually are going to omit the minus part of our answer because it would end up giving us a negative time. So we'll just focus our attention on the plus sign. So when you do 5.1 plus the square root of 115.29, and then divide that answer by 8, you will get a time of approximately 1.98 seconds. And this is the correct answer to part D.